You know, like all countries, money is really important. It's something that shows your status in society and kind of where you are in life. Korea's economy is especially noteworthy because of the sort of, a lot of people say it's like a meteoric rise to success. They've sort of jumped up really quickly and it's made a lot of really interesting societal dynamics because of that. South Korea has made one of the uh, most incredible economic transformations in the world in the last 50, 60 years or so. Uh, when you think about it, uh, coming out of the Korean War, it was really one of the world's poorest countries, and today it is one of the world's richest. I'm Evan Ramstad. I'm from Minnesota in the United States, and I'm a correspondent for the Wall Street Journal. Evan had been reporting financial news for the last 20 years, so we invited him to Daegu to see the source of Korea's cash flow. Consco was the company responsible for producing all of Korea's currency. The minting facilities were equipped to manufacture around 1.7 billion coins per year. And the printing machines used the latest technology to add a variety of security features to each banknote. Uh, with this machine, uh, we inspect the uh, whole un untouched sheet. Okay. There, yeah, and if there is something wrong or error or not, Throw it in the garbage if it's bad? Yeah, yeah. 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 If, if, if it rejects the uh, garbage, yeah. Oh, it looks so complicated. I know. Yeah, yeah. I like the interchange. Ah, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Can we take a look? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay, yeah, cool. Well, I think Koreans have a very interesting uh, relationship with money and, and with the economy. I, I think that the expectations for so long were we got to fight uh, we all got to pitch in, and we've got to do what we can for the economy. I cannot believe how much money there is in this room right now. Yeah, this is more money than I've ever seen. And the 50,000 wasn't always around. When, when did it come out? Oh, just a few years ago, 2009 or 2010, I yeah. think. Why did it take them so long to go with the 50s? Well, one of the reasons was they had a suspicion that if they had higher bills, that um, it would make it easier to like do bribery and corruption because yeah. you could put um, less money into physical space. Right. And so part of the reason people would get busted um, for bribes and things like this is because they would have to have suitcases full or suit, you know, sense, yeah. lots of bags of, of money to, yeah. to pass. Logistics, uh, just a pure, <laughs> just pure logistics. bribery right, logistics right. problem. I've been here for six years, almost six and a half years in Seoul. And I've started to learn that um, business news actually is just as interesting and dramatic as other types of news reporting. Money is kind of at the heart of everything. What do Korean people think about money in general? Does it, is it very similar to like the, Kore the American sort of consumption? Yeah, I think people like money. Yeah. People, want, people want money. Generally, sure. yeah. I've heard of this concept before, this desire uh, Generally money. true, yeah. There is a funny little sense here though that's different from the US and some other countries that if you have a lot of money you probably cheated to get it. Oh, really? And somehow rich people don't quite deserve to be rich or something. Yeah. That gets bound up in the whole bigger notion of uh, the history of the country and uh, the colonization and part of the deeper resentment of that is tied in the notion that people got wealthy in a kind of unfair way. It took me a long time to sort of understand some of the political connections and it takes kind of like seeing how people behave here because like I said, you know, the political division here is really rooted in this view of history. Wow. Think we can touch it? I think so. It doesn't feel quite like... No. It, it is more colorful though now that you really look at it. A lot of people talk about how fast the Korean economy has grown since the 1960s. It's like this sort of like celebrity economy, you know. Right, I mean? the miracle of Omaha. Right. Yeah. What, what caused that? What's the short answer of, of where that came from? Two big reasons. One was the desire to catch up with Japan and um, then the desire to beat North Korea. Sure. And so, you know, you had the dictatorship here that lasted 19 years and um, you know, that's undemocratic and, and we come from democratic countries and we think that's unnatural and things like that. But if you look at it from an economic standpoint, 
uh, when you are a country with scarce resources, it helps to have uh, a leader who makes hard choices about what to do with scarce resources sure. and um, made some people winners and made some people losers. Yeah. Now, that, that brings up an interesting to uh, topic, like the, the winners in this case, like the, the, the table, table. Uh, the winner. Sure. Do you think they cause more harm than good these days? or? Like, I, I guess they get a lot of on? criticism, right? Because at, at least from foreigners, we think of them as like monopolies almost, you know, yeah. yeah. Are they good or bad? Or? Well, they're both. They're both good and bad. And um, uh, again, it's a form of, of economic uh, structure that works well in a developing society and not so well in a developed society. So right now you have in Korea a lot of very well-educated people who um, feel that they don't have the proper opportunity to become wealthy. Do you see it changing nowadays? Like Changing a little bit. I mean, I think there's always entrepreneurs in any environment, right? I mean, everybody has the desire to make money and the desire to make money the way that they are most interested to do, the, the, the things that, that appeal to them, right? What, what happens, I think, is that um, you have incumbent players who like the way things are and, and are reluctant to see things change. There's an economic term called growth potential. And um, there's growth, and then there's your potential growth. Right. And, and both of them have dropped quite a lot, especially in the time, the, just the six years I've been here. And um, one way to get both of them going is to get rid of some of these old rules and tariffs and taxes and things like this that, again, worked when the country was a developing country, but are out of date when it's a developed one. There are ways to get both growth potential and growth going again, but uh, there's been too many po political fights to address some of this. So this, I think, is the core problem in the South Korean economy right now. What's next for you? In, in the US, yeah. you're, headed, you're headed back home soon. What's the, what's yeah. the plan when you get back there? Yeah. Well, the plan is to keep doing journalism and it'll be on my own and you know like freelance kind of thing kind of like you guys have done and, yeah, yeah. and, and so yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in some ways the most wonderful part of the Korea assignment was that I got to um, cover so many different things learning about um, the history and learning about the sociology and the behavior uh, of people making the connections across all of those um, disciplines and fields is going to inform me for the rest of my career it always comes comes back to Korea's enormous success that the, the country has reached in a, in a very short time. We've come within a couple of decades from a place where you know, luxury goods wasn't even something that could be possibly considered to a country where all of a sudden there's, there's wealth. My name is Rachel Zimmerman. I'm from Switzerland, although I'm Swiss and a German by nationality. I'm running a shoe import uh, retail and distribution business in uh, Seoul. We met Reto near a shop in Cheongdam. Within the past 10 years, the area had become the center for many foreign luxury brands. In this area, we have all the big brands who have their flagship stores, sure. you know, yeah. all the big brand you names that you would know, the Rolls Royce Motors over there. Right. So pretty cheap stuff mostly, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, it's mostly <laughs> cheap Rolls stuff. Rolls Royce, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Some Prada. <laughs> the definition of luxury in Korea, if you go out and ask the general public, I think, would still be some recognizable brand name. It has to do with price. It has to do with being recognizable. Luxury traditionally is more, or was seen as more something to set yourself apart from others. In Korea, it's often not really doing that. It's more belonging to something. So you get the same handbag like everybody else. So sure. you get the same, whatever brand it may be. It's more of an inclusion than an yeah. exclusion, right? Yeah. Like you've got to buy these things to kind of fit inside the luxury group. Traditionally, yeah. yes. Here, it seems very important for many people to, to have certain items simply because of the brand. To become, I guess, more aware of that? Is it hard for the average person to 
do that? Um, probably is not too easy, yes, because you have to, it, it always, if in any society, if you step out of line, that takes courage. Yeah. And in Korea, we, we have a society where stepping out of line hasn't been practiced for thousands of years. Most of the big brand name luxury products are not really that luxury. They're not, um, they're not particularly rare. Um, they're just expensive. You're not really financing the product most of the times. What you're financing is a huge margin that you, you don't even want to know as a customer. Reto decided to take a different approach when he opened Zimmerman and Kim. Instead of focusing on brand names, he concentrated on quality. At his shop, we found a discriminating selection of men's shoes, each pair thoughtfully handcrafted by artisans in Europe. It came from the idea that we wanted to bring really high-end men's shoes to Korea because there just wasn't a big offering um, when we started first looking and then even before we opened the shop we found you know a lot of the what we think are the best companies in Europe to make men's shoes are not yet in Korea. So these are pretty much handmade so, just like... Yes, so these shoes are fully handmade. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, not, not that many shoe companies do that either, right? The, the hand welting or even welting the shoes. No. These no. days it's a, a small Mostly percentage. Mostly glued. Um, ah. I mean, the, hand, the one problem is always this, this term handmade. Sure. You know, most shoes are mostly handmade. Even your cheap China manufactured sneakers are largely handmade. But it, obviously it doesn't mean the same thing that, that you expect sure. in, in this kind of context. Now, did you know a lot about shoes before you started this, or was this like a, a personal hobby or interest that blossomed? It was just a personal hobby, yeah. At some point, I, I have an episode going back very early with my father when I was maybe that tall and, and recognizing his shoes. My father is a lawyer, and so for professional reasons, he's always been wearing suits and, and good shoes. And I remember very early on, I must have been maybe five years old, I remember slipping into his shoes, which were enormously huge for me, obviously, but they were classic broguing shoes, black, and, and that fascinated me. I always wanted to have the same shoes. I mean, my father used to, to polish his shoes every Saturday. Mm. That was a ritual in, in our family. And, um, in, in Korea, traditionally, polishing shoes would be seen as something very low level. And now this is sl slowly shifting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so how long have you guys been open here? How long is? Pretty exactly two years now. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, we'll have the official uh, anniversary in March. Oh, fantastic. Well, Congratulations. That's thank you very yeah. much. That's a great milestone to make, the two-year yeah. mark. I think we've, su we've survived the very critical point where you don't know is it going to work or, or not. Of course, being a smaller company, it is, um, you have certain challenges. Uh, you, we don't have the advertising budget of a big luxury conglomerate. We cannot buy a flagship store that is five stories high and you know, has a huge name on it. But even if we had, let's say someone gives us a lot of money and, and we, can, we can put up the, the big store and advertise every month in, in the magazines, we would create a demand which you cannot satisfy with these exclusive niche luxury manufacturers. When we set up the business, we went and visited all the manufacturers and um, you know, to, to, to really see how they make shoes, to see someone sitting there and doing the sewing, and, and yeah. that um, was very inspirational. I think, yeah, once you see the craft that goes into it and, and how much time and effort and um, precision, it's hard for someone not to, I think, appreciate you yeah. know, what's going on. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. As sometimes, I mean, that's that's a good thing as as your self motivation, but then it's it may be a bit of a challenge when it comes to, you know, transferring that to to the people who haven't had the, the experience firsthand. So, what do you think? How how has the perception been with your customers? Um, in terms they, of luxury and in terms of yeah, like the luxury craft and and what goes into these shoes and. Because luxury the in Korea, I think, is, tags and everything, I guess, here. is all about brands. And this is not mm. so much, it is about the brands, it's, but it's also yeah. about the craftsmanship. 
I think our customers mostly have found an appreciation for good quality products and they have found their style or maybe even if they're experimenting with certain things they're comfortable in, in doing that and they don't need to be like everybody else. The, the view of luxury in Korea is definitely changing. You can see that by the new magazines that come out, by a lot of smaller companies that are popping up, a lot of individuals who are all of a sudden interested in topics that were not even uh, you know, talked about a couple of years ago. Thank you. Yes, your new shoes. I like that it, we're in like a like it, we're in a gentleman's shoe store, and I got I was able to get my shoes. I know, and poor Eric is left here. <laughs> I know. You we can all also have to do come back. Yeah, our women's yeah. shoes, you know, they're awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. I need to look into that. We had learned about Korea's fast-changing economy and the developing luxury market, but what about meeting basic needs? We switched gears and set off to meet Lynn and Rusty. Recently married, they had just begun searching for a new home. We're planning to start a family within the next year, so we're looking for a little bit of a bigger place, um, as well as somewhere that we can you know, commit to for a long period of time. So somewhere that we can actually call home. Bigger um, place? Not necessarily not a, bigger, yeah. but I mean around the same size, but I mean, like I said, we do, we want to start a family, so... It's, for me, for me, it's more about downsizing a little bit and saving more money. So, because kids aren't cheap. Hi, nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. This is Alice. This is Alice, the real estate <laughs> nice We knew house hunting in Seoul wouldn't be easy. The terms and conditions for renting or buying property in Korea were very different from many other countries. And Lynn and Rusty were looking for an apartment with an option called Chunse. Chunsei allowed renters to invest a large sum of money that would later be returned when the contract was finished. With Chunsei, there actually is no monthly rent. You give a big lump sum as kind of an investment, and you're guaranteed to receive 100% of that back at the end of your contract. I think it's a great idea. It's an option for those who don't want to have to spend money on rent, but also don't have enough money to buy their own home. Ideally, we'd like a three-bedroom house, um, but we're okay with a two-bedroom mm -hmm. um, as long as Maybe there's some kind of indoor veranda with extra storage space. We just, we've just accumulated a lot of stuff, as I'm sure you guys sure have been here for so yeah. many years. We have to have at least one parking spot. We, we both have cars. Oh, wow. Um, That's tough in, like, uh, yeah. it it is. Is. in a city. It's it hard. Is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but so how much are, are you guys looking, looking to spend? What's your sort of... Um, so our budget range is between 150 million won to about 200 million won but ideally we'd like somewhere right in the middle like around 170 to 175 million oh, okay. sure. the area that we want to live in Chunze is very rare um, a lot of the landlords there prefer to rent their houses instead of offering it as Chunze. Lin and Rusty currently lived in Hebangchon and since they liked the neighborhood they wanted to find a place nearby Luckily, our realtor, Alice, found a place that met all their needs in Itaewon. The three-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment had two parking spots plus outdoor space. The only exception was that it was listed for 250 million won, which was clearly over their budget. This bedroom doesn't have a closet, so people usually use this bedroom as their study room or entertainment room. Make a nice baby room. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is guest bathroom, color in pink, like for oh, wow. newlywed. How about that, that pink? That's very <laughs> pink for sure. Got to have an outdoor area, either a balcony, and I don't mean like an enclosed veranda. Like I need an outdoor area. I have a, a giant smoker, barrel smoker grill, and I can't put that on a veranda and smoke my entire house up. Oh wow, it is a nice view. And it's, you know, big enough for what we need, right? I think an important thing is when finding a home in Seoul, especially as Westerners who plan to be here for a while, we want things that remind us of home back in the States. So little things like you know, having Western amenities like a full-size oven or say a bathtub in the bathroom, which you know isn't very common in Korea, um, things like that make it feel more like a home for us. That place, the space, the size, all of the details it has, do you think that's a reasonable price for this neighborhood? 
Yeah, yeah, it's quite reasonable. What do you think? Is it? I know it's above your price range, but is it worth it? Worth it, I guess. Or um, it's hard to say. Yeah. Sure. Um, there were some things that we actually really didn't like. The bathtub was tiny, and the color scheme was really. It was a little out there. Disconcerting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just from a small town, so you know, for half that much, half of what we're paying now, I have a yard and a fully fenced in yard, three bedroom house with, you know, private garage and all kinds of stuff. Do you think it's easy to find the place that you're, the ideal place that you're looking for? Um, for Chunse, yeah, I mean, it's not easy, especially looking in our neighborhood. If they wanted to stay in budget, they would have to go further afield. For 200 million won, Alice had found a three-bedroom apartment with parking and a rooftop garden, but the house was located in Buamdong, a quiet neighborhood in the heart of the hills. Definitely not in our preferred neighborhood, <laughs> so, but right. not yeah. close to our preferred neighborhood. That's what scares me. This unit has three bedrooms, one bathroom, plus closet space. Oh, wow. okay. In a perfect world, we get two full-size separate kitchen with a stove, not just a little, an oven. Yeah, it's a pretty nice kitchen with a decent amount of cabinet space for sure. Well, you just have a stove top there though. Yeah, that's... Oh, um, the oven might be a challenge in a lot of Korean Well, we to find. We're yeah. probably going to have to get our own oven and mm. install it ourselves. You know, we realized that a lot of the things that we're looking for, we're not going to find all of it in one place for the budget that we have. Oh, wow. Look at this. Oh, beautiful. Oh, my Ew. God. Holy cow. What do you guys think of this spot? It's amazing. I mean, what can you say? It's a piece of country living in the middle of the city, right? right. Yeah. How about the apartment? The house itself is nice. But, you know, at that point we were thinking, ah, oh, it's still a bit far from where we want to be. And right. then we come up to the rooftop <laughs> and we see the fantastic view and yeah. then it makes us, you know, think again. And what, what do you think the process overall is? Is it a more frustrating process or a fun process? Frustrating. Frustrating? <laughs> yeah. I, don't I mean, to... it's also exciting, you know, you, you have this image of what your new home will be like but at the same time the process is a bit frustrating because you know not everything meets what you're looking for and mm -hmm. it maybe and also something else i realized today is that after looking at these places you know and thinking back to our budget you know if we really want a nice place we're going to have to reconsider our, our budget, budget possibly yeah. so alice the the process seems to be kind of difficult i mean do you think that it's because they're foreigners? Mainly because we Korean and foreigners they have different taste. Because many Korean they prefer stay like high rise apartment or they they don't care about the outdoor space usually. When they have a little bit outdoor space, uh, they cover it up. Is this something you guys would be willing to make this kind of a commute for? Oh, it's just so hard though with this yeah, I, I can't, place. I couldn't make a decision at this point, yeah, you sure. know, yeah. it's something I'd really have to sit down and we'd have to talk about together and yeah. really sure. outweigh the pros and cons. Sure. Yeah. Good luck on the adventure. Yeah. Invite us over for the Yeah, let us know <laughs> for the housewarming party. Hey, yeah. no worries, yeah. no worries. I think it's more important for us to spend the time to find a place that we feel like we can live in there for, you know, say, however many years, than to rush into a place and then regret choosing that place.